Hello, everyone, and welcome to another evening of music here at From the Top. I'm your host, Peter Dugan, and this is a very special show. We're calling it Musical Roots. Now, the three young musicians who you're going to meet this evening are all very well-versed in Western classical music, but beyond that, they are experts in other musical traditions, traditions that they trace their own roots to, and it's, it's really just amazing to see how deeply knowledgeable these young musicians are of these other styles. And, you know, this is something that's really important to me. I think that every musical genre that we learn makes us better at every other genre that we play. Um, and not only that, but music can connect us to other cultures, right? By, by learning about another culture's music, we get to, we get to understand them more as a people. Uh, but also by learning the musical traditions of our own cultures, uh, it connects us to where we came from, connects us to our past. So all of those things are, are themes you're going to be hearing about this evening. Uh, we have three wonderful musicians, Daniela Santiago Martinez, uh, a guitarist. We have uh, Benjamin Lee, a great Erhu player, and Bram Schenk, a clarinetist. They are all 18, 19 years old, around that uh, age range. They're coming to us from all over the country. I think we have um, Seattle, Washington is where Bram is from, and we've got Minneapolis is where Benjamin is from. And uh, Daniela is originally from Texas, but is coming to us this evening from Interlock in Michigan, where she's a student. Uh, so it's going to be a great show. Later on in the program, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about my musical roots and uh, maybe give you a little demonstration. So stick around for that. Uh, we also have our game coming up, so be sure to get into the chat section, tell us where you're watching from, let us know how you're enjoying the show, and uh, when the game happens, we want you all to participate. Uh, but now, let's turn things over to Daniela Santiago Martinez, who is going to get things started on the guitar. Beautiful. Daniela, it's so good to see you again. How are you? Thank you and good. I'm really good. Um, it's been a little warm around here, but it started to snow again. So kind of well, sad about that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, spring is in full force here in New York. I got my short sleeves on. Uh, tell yes. everyone what you just played. So I just played Canarios. It's a Baroque piece. It's the first Baroque piece I've ever played. And I just love like the different styles and how it the piece is like moving. It's like a dance kind of. Yeah. Uh, Daniela, you, in addition to playing classical guitar, as you just did, you also are well versed in other styles. Talk to us about uh, the video that we're going to see now and uh, what we're going to be hearing you play in it. So other than classical guitar, I do play another type of style which is in the regional mexicano genre so it's like a mexican type of style of music and so what you're going to be watching is me playing two pieces that i combined into one and so they're like riffs that are played on a 12 string guitar that are 12 string guitars are usually in octaves but the way that i set it up for the genre is they're both in pairs so like mm. as you can see this is a six string um but normally a 12 string acoustic would have two of the same of these strings so it sounds even more fuller ah. and it makes the riff stand out more great i can't wait to watch this video let's roll the tape
So, Daniela, that was you. That was two of you in that video, like, because you also had a six string too. So, you recorded yourself twice, right? And it kind of accompanied yes. yourself. Now, normally, would you be doing this with a band, or is this like, is this something you do strictly by yourself? No, normally I, I, I would do this with the band. So back at home, I did start an all-female girl band. And so as you could tell, the uh, style that I play is used with, uh, is played with the two-string guitar, the one that does the riffs, yeah. a six-string guitar, which accompanies the, the melody, which is the 12-string, and uh, an acoustic bass or a tuba. So it's one of those two that plays the bass That's what part. holds the bass line down. Yes. Wow, amazing. But you know, with... But, you know, like with the pandemic, it was hard to collaborate with many people. And I thought to myself, I was like, well, I don't I don't really need uh, other people to make videos, especially now that everything's like live stream or or recorded online. And so I was like, well, I could play both parts. Uh, I'm still struggling on the bass line, but <laughs> but I mean, I can do I can do the guitar. Yeah, we got to get so you a tuba next. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so you have one more video you're going to share with us, right? Yes. So what are we going to hear now? So now you're going to hear, uh, a, so I, uh, once again, I mashed up two different songs, but this time it's actually a cover. So I combined two songs and I transitioned into them and I hope you all enjoy it. Great. Gosh, that was so much fun. Daniela, you have a beautiful voice. Uh, I, I try. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. What a, what a beautiful, and the arrangement, the video, all, everything just came together so nicely. If you're just joining us, that was Daniela Santiago Martinez. She's coming to us 
this evening from uh, Interlock in Michigan. But actually, uh, Daniela is originally from Texas, and we want to give a big shout out to Austin Soundwaves. Austin Soundwaves was uh, a major organization that had a huge role in, in Daniela's life growing up, and uh, they are a great uh, organization dedicated to making music learning accessible and equitable for all. Such an important mission, and uh, I think there are some folks from Austin Soundwaves joining us uh, this evening. So hi to all of you. Big shout out. Uh, Daniela, any, anything you'd like to say to Austin Soundwaves before we move on to the next part of our show? Yes. I would just like to say that I'm so grateful for all of your help. Uh, Dr. Kumatra and Dr. Slevin, y'all have definitely impacted my life so much. And I'm just thankful for, for everything y'all have done. Well, I know that they're like super proud of you, Danny, and uh, and so are we. If you haven't heard Daniela's segment on the radio yet, you can by going uh, to fromthetop.org or wherever you get your podcast, subscribe to the From the Top podcast and be sure to check it out. So now let's bring back Bram Schenk, our young clarinetist. Danny, we'll see you later. We'll see you very shortly. Um, Bram, you have a wild selection to start things off for us right now. What are you going to play? So I thought I'd start off today's program by playing uh, Paganini's Fifth Caprice arranged for clarinet. Is this something that happens a lot, that clarinetists play Paganini Caprices? Well, there's a book of not all of them, I think 16 or so Caprices, and mm -hmm. sometimes they're uh, asked for for various uh, programs and we like to play a lot of violin repertoire especially when we want to <laughs> show virtuosity uh, and I would because also the, the clarinet it's relatively new there's not a ton of repertoire right. out there so all right well launch into this whenever you're ready and uh, yeah can't wait take it from the top
Brilliant, brilliant. Bram Shank, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Um, that was stunning uh, virtuosity, Mr. Shank. Beautiful. So um, that was Paganini, of course. Um, but I'm curious um, if you could talk about the music that, you know, tonight is all about musical roots. So um, talk about the music that really drives you and uh, where, your, where your heart is. Well, my first group music experience was playing in a klezmer band with a local uh, synagogue near where I live here in Seattle. Uh, shout out to Temple Bethon. I Klezmer is literally translated to uh, musical instruments in Hebrew, and it's probably the it's best described as the musical tradition of Ashkenazim, uh, which are the groups uh, the diasporic group that settled in uh, Europe primarily. It's a f uh, folk music, traditionally, that's learned by ear and passed down generationally for weddings and for celebrations. And its primary influence is like uh, Jewish liturgical modes and melodies, as well as uh, Middle Eastern and European diasporic cultures. Uh, today, Klezmer has many forms. Uh, lately, in the 70s, there was a major revival in America. So... I can play today a piece called Shalom uh, Aleichem, which means peace be upon you. And I learned this through uh, fake sheets, uh, not passed down generationally, <laughs> but I have a great uh, appreciation for it. And then maybe after I'll, I would like to talk about the different modes in Klezmer. I think that would be a good uh, oh, sure. conversation. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear some of the modes. Um, would you actually, um, I, w I wonder if we can do the uh, a little demonstration of modes first, because I'd love to bring back uh, Benjamin and Daniela, um, so, because we're all learning from each other tonight. So uh, welcome back, Benjamin. Welcome back, Daniela. Um, and I think uh, Bram, give us a little, a little demonstration of some of these, some of these modes and you know, I'm also curious to hear a little bit about the different sounds that you create uh, on the clarinet for klezmer versus what we'd expect in, uh, you know, if you were playing a, a Brahms sonata. Well, so I'm not a uh, klezmer. I love klezmer, play a significant amount of klezmer, but I don't want any true klezmers uh, getting uh, mad at me. Okay. But, <laughs> but what I so klezmer is played on stegerim, which are uh, prayer modes in the synagogue or different co territory core territorial uh, countries. So think about when someone says play a march uh, or play uh, a polka, things that come to mind. Well, there's certain things uh, like a freilich or a bulg or a doina. So the most common mode in klezmer is the um, ahava rabah. Uh, also is similar to hijaz makam. Uh, and in Western music, it's called a Phrygian dominant scale. So mm. it goes like this. And then yeah. an another common one is the Misha Berach mode, which uh, it's a Western music that would be a uh, altered Dorian scale, except with a tritone and a varied sixth and seventh. Uh, and that goes like this. <laughs> That's popular in Freilich styles, and it's also really similar to an Arabic nikriz in Makkah. Hmm, it's cool because I feel like these sounds are, you know, to me, I've I I don't know klezmer music certainly to the degree that you do, but I've heard a, a good deal of it, and when I hear those sounds immediately, I you know they're recognizable to me. Uh, but it's really interesting to get into the nitty gritty theory of it. Um, before you launch into your next piece, any questions that uh, Benjamin or Daniela that you have to, for Bram? Yeah, um, actually, I was uh, listening to the modes, and I was wondering, so you have two different main modes. Um, so, sorry, I'm, I'm just curious. So what was it again? Like... I'm probably off by a lot, but... I was just wondering, for these two different modes, they have very different uh, flavors, I think. So how do you choose 
like which one you want to put in when you're trying to introduce this type of genre of music into what you play? Well, so if you're playing klezmer, a lot of it is improvisational. Now, I'm not very good at improvisational since I mostly play uh, classical music, but each one is associated with a particular style of klezmer. So I said that the uh, Havre Ba. That's in a lot of dances, like freilachs and bulgars, as opposed, which is what most of klezmer music is made to dance to. But there's also like the doina, um, for the Misha Berach mode. That's meant to imitate a chazan, a cantor, so it's more uh, a solemn melody that's meant for more entertainment in the music itself. Hmm. Great question. How did how did you come across this? Like, how did you get interested? Well, I'm Jewish. I'm, and I played klezmer. It was just part of my culture. I grew up listening to it, and I uh, had a wonderful teacher when I was young named Sean Weaver, and he taught me a lot of klezmer. I had some klezmer lessons, and I just really grew to appreciate how I appreciate it. You know, a lot of the music we play, I play all the time in orchestra by Wagner, by Strauss, by, I mean, any main composer, these people were virulently anti-Semitic. I mean, I can't, most of them were, uh, and as well as being racist and sexist and all the things we now today uh, look down upon. But, uh, so I enjoy playing classical music and, uh, trying to get be the best I can at it while also uh, wholeheartedly embracing my identity. Hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and um, I, I want to, man, I, I, I could honestly sit here and chat with you guys about these different musical styles like all day. Um, but let's move, let's move on because I want to get to your next piece, Bram. Uh, uh, what are you going to play for us? So I... Oh, you already mentioned it, didn't you? You, you already yeah. said the name. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to play Shalom Aleichem, which is uh, Peace Be Upon You. Yeah. Um, it's pretty popular uh, for solo clarinet. There's a really powerful arrangement by Bela Kovach for uh, Giora Feidman, very famous klezmer clarinetist today. And I decided to play this piece. Okay, great. Can't wait to hear it.
Give it up for Bram Shank. That was powerful. Let's bring back um, everyone on onto the uh, camera here, and it's time for our game. Um, before we, yeah, I, I saw that, Bram. You're excited, aren't you? Before we launch into the to the game, um, I want to thank everyone who's watching at this point, and uh, if you're just joining us, it's it's musical roots night at From the Top. We have Bram Shank, Benjamin Lee, we have Daniela Santiago Martinez, and um, we, uh, uh, if you if you are enjoying the program, just please uh, consider making a donation to our efforts. We are an independent nonprofit organization, and uh, we rely on the generosity of folks like yourselves uh, for us to continue our mission of amplifying the voices of amazing young artists like the ones who you're meeting tonight. Uh, so with that, let's get on to the game. And, um, you know, I mentioned it several times that tonight's uh, theme is musical roots, but I want to talk about a different type of root right now, which is root vegetables. OK, and um, so <laughs> so tonight's game is, is this a root vegetable or is it a composer? And, uh, and I'm going to say the, the name, and you just tell me either composer or root vegetable. That's it. All right, here we go. The first one is Masara. Masara. And um, we're going to start with Benjamin. Is that a composer or a root vegetable? I'm tempted to say composer. Okay. How about Daniela? I'm thinking vegetable. <laughs> Okay, how about Bram? I'm going to go with composer. Okay, and everyone at home, put your guess in the chat, please. Uh, the correct answer is composer. That was Pino Massara, who is a 20th century Italian composer uh, who wrote hits for the likes of Dean Martin and Nat King Cole, including his hit Grazio, uh, Grazie Prego Scusi. Grazie Prego Scusi. One of the, one of the all-time great songs. Um, okay, the next one is... Crummock. Crummock. Is that a root vegetable or a composer? And we'll go backwards. This time we'll start with Bram. Crummock. I'm going to go with vegetable. Daniela? Me too. Vegetable. Benjamin? I think vegetable. It sounds oh. too much like crumb. Or it's like, yeah. like a food. You guys are good. Crummock is a um, medieval, like it was very popular back in, in medieval times, especially in Scotland. And apparently it has a crunchy, peppery taste. Crummock. Would you like some crummock with your haggis? Okay, I apologize for that. Okay, <laughs> next up we have Mellow. Mellow. Um, Daniela, you go first this time. I think... Vegetable because wait no. Mm. Don't forget to put your guesses in the chat at home. Mellow, I'll t I'll spell it for you. Vegetable. Oh, vegetable. Okay, vegetable. Um, Bram. I'm gonna go with vegetable as well. It sounds like marshmallow. Okay, Benjamin. Maybe vegetable. Yeah, it sounds like a melon or grand all, marshmallow. All in line with vegetable. Actually, it's a composer, Rosita Mello, uh, Argentinian composer, 20th century, who's best known for her song Desde el Alma, um, beautiful waltz that made her really one of the first uh, widely known female composers from the, from the uh, Argentinian uh, sort of southern area of, of South America. Uruguay, Argent, Argent, Argentina. Okay, next one is Scorzonera. Scorzonera. Um, Benjamin. I'm going to go with composer. It seems like a nice long name. Kind of like Beethoven or, you know. Okay, <laughs> Bram. I'm going to go with composer as well. Daniela, what do you think? Me too. Wow, composer. you guys are all in agreement and all wrong. Scorzonera is a um, is a vegetable, also known as oyster plant. Apparently, oh it tastes God. a little bit like oysters. Um, don't serve me that, please, in my omelet. Okay, next is manioc, manioc, and Bram, you're first. Vegetable. Vegetable, Daniela. 
Composer. Composer. Ben? Composer. Composer. Bram got it. It's vegetable. It's very similar to a yucca, if you've ever had yucca. Uh, okay, we just have two more. The next one is called Spottis Wood. Spottis Wood. And uh, Daniela, you're first for this one. Composer. Okay, Benjamin? Vegetable. And Bram? Vegetable. Daniela got it. This one's a composer. Alicia Ann Spottiswood. She was a Scottish composer in the 19th century, and her hit was Annie Laurie, which is a, a, a well-known tune. And finally, beet. Root, vegetable, or composer? Beet. Wait, like B-E-E-T? I, I will not spell it. I will only say beet. <laughs> Vegetable. Uh, composer. Composer. Vegetable. Bram. What do you? Which one are you gonna say? Well, it's both. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's both. It. Composer. Okay, it's both. both. Beet. If you spell it B E E T, of course, is the vegetable. But there, are, there is a composer named Janet Beet. B E A T. Um, a oh. living composer uh, known for her microtonal compositions so that's it for our game folks i lost score you all did very well i uh, hope you enjoyed for musical roots night our edible roots game and now it's time uh benjamin you've been waiting so patiently with your beautiful air who there uh i'd love for you to perform for us i from what i understand you're going to play one of your own compositions by the way benjamin is an alum of the show he was on uh about two years ago now if i'm counting correctly uh so you should go check out his performance on our show all of these young musicians are alums so listen to all of them uh benjamin what are you going to play for us so i actually back all the way back it seems like eons ago um all the way back in last april just when COVID was starting uh, we were planning on being on Tiny Desk to do a five-minute extension of the Urhu Classic Horse Race, which is exactly as it sounds. It is one of the best-known Urhu Classics that depicts a simple horse race. And for the Tiny Desk performance, uh, I figured I would go ahead and try my best to extend it and see where we could go in terms of the story. Because Urhu Classics... I would say are very well known for having very specific stories. So I guess if I were to compare to something that maybe we know, like Snot in C Major, Snot in C Major has a lot of abstract feelings, but um, there's no specific story, that at least that I know of. Whereas in something like Man Jiang Hong, that is an Urhu classic that depicts a South Song Dynasty general who goes to recover land only to be betrayed by an evil advisor who tricks the emperor into getting Yue the general, back to the capital just to get him hanged before he can finish recovering all the land. That sounds like it could be so, on Netflix. <laughs> it, it could be a Netflix show. I, there's actually plenty of TV shows already. It would be... It would be so cool to see a Netflix show about that. And then just to have Man Jiang Ho as the theme. Yeah, that man. You would so lay cool. down that theme song. Oof. Yeah. But um. anyway, going back to Horse Race, I decided to maybe make the race a bit more exciting. And also, since thankfully I've played the Urhu for more than a few years, um, and I've been able to kind of pour that experience into this composition. So... First of all, in terms of the story, um, I first start off with the original horse race, which is about maybe two or three minutes. And then after that, whoever this horse protagonist is, um, is maybe having a bit of a hard time. Mm. He's, he's still gunning for it, still trying to get that win. But maybe it's, uh, he's getting a little bit homesick for the prairie, for, for his home. Or maybe he's, he's starting to get tired. Right. So I try to bring in just a, a few new melodies there as well as um, a bunch of new techniques to try to show that it's not really just a straightforward race. It's not always that easy. Right, because there's so, also people betting on it. There's gambling. Yes. There's yeah, crime. Um, the mafia's involved. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different yeah, piece altogether. Yeah. Keep, keep going. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of mafia stuff. And, and along the way, I get to showcase a few techniques. So one of 
the most characteristic ones is the horse neigh. So. <laughs> That's a very famous one, but you only do it once in the original version. So I kind of wanted to have fun and maybe do it a little right. bit more. And as the extension goes on, I actually made the horse neigh cut off a little bit sooner because it's almost like the horse is gasping. Right. You know, it's, it's getting harder and harder to get through this race. And I actually add a bunch of other things that will be pretty fun, like horse galloping. So that's pretty that fun. That is pretty fun. Uh, and that, yeah, and I actually also composed piano accompaniment for this. So um, sadly, because of COVID, I had to use um, a digital one, but I think it, it worked out pretty cool. well. And it takes over the melody, um, and eventually we build up to that giant climax with a bit of uh, maybe just a lot of homesickness that kind of dies down. And all of a sudden you're just kind of like, no, I'm going to finish this race. And you go into double chords. So that's pretty interesting. Um, that's something that is, that's actually in Manjang Hong, but not horse race. So I kind of wanted to add that. to. Yeah. Now careful. Don't that. give away that's, too many spoilers. Yeah. You know, this is like, uh, yeah, oh, keep yeah. it. Keep, don't, we don't necessarily need to know exactly how it's going to end. We want to, we still want to see this thing on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the, really the truth for a lot of Urhu classics. The stories are so emotional and so specific that they could really be TV shows. That's kind of what makes me really love Urhu classics over other genres. All right. Can't wait to hear so, it. That's what makes it my favorite. Yeah. But I hope you enjoy. And yeah, with that, let's listen. We can take a listen. All right. Let's check it out.
it up for Benjamin Lee, fabulous air hoop player coming to us from Minnesota. This, of course, is our musical Roots Night at From the Top. Benjamin, that was amazing. Let, Thank you. I'm glad yeah, you I, I loved it. Let's bring back uh, Bram and let's bring back Daniela. Um, you guys, what'd you think of that? That was amazing. Like, I can't believe all of that was going on, like you said, with one string. Like, how? How do you how do you, how do you find the notes like? Well, it so is two strings. It, oh, it two strings. It is two strings, but I I have only one finger position, so I can't really do any chords or stuff like that, like on a violin or a guitar, like so. It's actually just one one finger going down. So one finger goes on both mm. strings, and I'm able to do that because the erhu. We call it the Chinese violin, um, just for convenience of saying what it is, but it is a bit of a misnomer because, um, one, the Erhu is almost a thousand years older than the violin, and two, because the Erhu is actually part of a completely different branch of musical instruments called the Huqins. And what's cool about a Huqin is that a lot of them have the bow placed in between the strings. So what that means is that along with having to do twice the rosining on the hmm. bow, um, you also get to just put one finger on both strings and then you can use the bow to kind of select which string you want. And that allows me to do a lot of cool effects. So for example, bouncing bow, I can do that because you know my bow is kind of stuck in there so I don't have to worry about it flailing about or anything. So that's pretty cool. And then I can also do all sorts of plucking. I can even pluck with my thumb if I want to, if I want it to be even louder. That's pretty cool. And then because the bow is in between the strings, I can actually use my bow stick as a pseudo bow and get the double chord. Ah, that's how you do it. Well, it's fascinating to learn so much about how the instrument works, and it's a real treat for us at From the Top to be able to feature the Erhu. Um, one, I, I want to ask um, a question, I guess, for any of you, which is um, after experiencing this evening of hearing everyone's different traditional music, do you feel like there is something um, that they all share in common or, or no? Is, does it, what strikes you in terms of the similarities? Um, any, any thoughts from any of you on that? Yeah, um, I actually think that after listening to all these different genres of music, I think it just goes to show that music, it isn't just an art, even from a scientific standpoint. It is 
essentially human emotion in the form of sound waves. It is a way mm. for us to literally turn something as abstract as empathy or the emotional context of what we're feeling at the moment and turn that into actual excitations in the air. And I think that's what unites a lot of musical genres. Um, yeah. Klezmer music is able to get across um, all sorts of things like dances or more solemn moods and you know Mexican music. I feel like it's it's so happy and optimistic, but it also doesn't ignore any sort of hardships. You know, you can still mm. you can still feel a twinge of that, but it doesn't get you down or anything like that. And well, what I'm struck by is the fact that all of you have such passion for it, and you are all you know not just driven, not just disciplined, but you love this music, you know, and that comes through so clearly when you play and when you talk about it. Um, any other thoughts from you, Bram or Daniela, before we close out? I'm just so thankful to be able to hear all this wonderful music and to be able to share the music I like to make. So I'm just very thankful for this opportunity. Yes, me too. I had never seen anybody play like you, Benjamin. So I, I'm really glad that we had this segment so I could learn more ad about different styles. Also about your style, Bram. I really love well, both of y'all's. Well, I loved it all, and I learned so much. Before Benjamin takes us out this evening, I want to thank everyone for watching, for spending this time with us. I, I really want to thank all three of you, Daniela, Bram, Benjamin. Thank you all so much, and um, this has been a lot of fun. Before Benjamin takes us out, I promised I would show you my traditional instrument. This is the baron. This is an Irish drum, and uh, I'm not particularly good at it, but... Uh, it sounds a little bit like this. You know, it's pretty cool. Good stuff. So that's my, uh, that's my show and tell for you all. And, uh, and now, um, Benjamin, you're going to close us out with a bit of what, we, what I always thought of as Western classical music in a way, and yet it's going to sound pretty special on the Urhu. Thank what you. is this going to be? This is going to be Chartus by Vittorio Monti, a three-minute bridge version that I hope will get across the flexibility of the Urhu and just the parts of music that unite us all. Take it away. Almost forgot this. <laughs>
Give it up for Benjamin Lee, Daniela Santiago Martinez, Graham Shank. I'm Peter Dugan. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank you. Good Bye. night. Thank you. Honored to be here. Bye.